Oh no! Oh no! He let himself on fire! <laughs> Mistakes were made. Yeah, the pole axe is basically the culmination of, of the training for every other single weapon. Basically, no one's trained to use them properly, slash safely, and no one's really qualified to choreograph them. I think my favorite thing about this game is how easy it is to, to kill people and get killed. I love everyone yelling, like, <laughs> No, I, I like that the arrows are just kind of going, 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 and like, you know, it's no joke. Yeah, also, this guy's got major Boromir vibes, because he's got like three arrows in him, he's still like, I'm good. Yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for the one that goes right here in the visor. <laughs> like the meme, yeah, the, the multiple arrow in the visor meme. <laughs> it's a lot of lateral swings that I've seen, just this way and this way, it feels like the whole time. I kind of have my like, sword fighter brain and then I have my kind of like a game or theatrical presentation that makes sense and is visible oh, yeah. brain and they sort of have to fight but also sort of agree sometimes and the thing with those the different kinds of swings I think it made it clear that you have different sort of moves you can do and that dictates I think how your block timing works if the opponent has armor then the armor might protect them or reduce the damage from a certain kind of you know so if you go from above then someone has a helmet on and you hit him with the helmet then bank you know that doesn't necessarily kill him, but maybe if you go laterally and they're not so armored in the middle, that's what I'm gonna, that's what I think is happening here. The sword fighter logic has to sometimes, you know, bow to the gameplay mechanics logic, particularly when there's so many players happening here, you know? My most important thing when I'm playing any sort of game, especially even if it's this for sword fighting, uh, I just need to look good, so. <laughs> All, all like practicality goes out the window. I need a cool cape. I want to look <laughs> awesome. Whether I go down a ton of times for that, that's okay. The aesthetic is really cool. And you know, they kind of have the red team and the blue team. And I'm not sure, I know there was a third team in DLC. I don't know what color they are, but the having that sort of heraldry make it easier to figure out who's who. That's like both a good game mechanic and a good real life mechanic. Although I'm sure in lots of cases, and particularly in like medieval times, telling who someone was by simply the color they're wearing wasn't that reliable. I think my favorite thing about this game is how easy it is to, to kill people and get killed. You know, kind of Call of Duty style, like if you get really whomped and you didn't block it, you're down. That's great. I like it. And also, the, the swinging the sword so far out, like, is get away from me. I need a second. Good strategy. Oh, and the, I like the pole arms. I like that this game has pole arms and that they're not super silly. Oh man, those pole arms are really good with the thrust. Like, he's, he's really far away from that guy. That's good. No, but that's that's also good. Again, the fact that there's friendly fire that you have to worry about your guys slicing you, that's actually really smart. And that's another thing to consider. Again, if you're like in a team, it's like, hey guys, like maybe not so much with the horizontal strikes when we're like next to each other because we'll just hit each other and that'd be, be lame. Again, sort of sword fight brain and video game brain actually. Yeah, I, that's cool. So I want I want some half sorting. You know, you get in close, so you're gonna have to start shortening your length of your weapon however you can, you know? I'll see the game character animations, they will go for the half sword, but they don't really stay there. I mean, but I still like it. I like that they kind of have different guards they hold and that there's different sort of things they do at least to start the moves. That's that's pretty neat. I'm, I'm impressed with the smoothness of the movements of like the, the game character models. Guy on fire running around. There's some guys that have their backup weapon and it's on their back, negatory. I mean, I get it, it's a video game. You wanna like have your like backup weapon. It's like, no, 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 this isn't Call of Duty. You can't like taking a rifle off your back with a sling. Like, if you have a pole arm, you're holding that pole arm and then you throw it away if you want the other one. You know, you're not like running around with a pole arm on your back. That's like a very, very bad idea. Cause someone could just grab that thing and yank you down. Like in this situation, particularly. An idiot handle. <laughs> yeah, but just like, again, people get restrained in this game. From behind, hey buddy. You know, just a handle. But you do look cool. People are used to like, I switch weapons, and then I switch back weapons. And it's like, eh, probably in this environment, you know, wide open space, you're going for big weapon first, until it breaks or someone takes it, and then you're going, you're moving your way down, depending on what your situation is. You know, like the idea of like switching to a smaller one and then back to a bigger one, probably not gonna be a thing you're gonna do. It's just not right. realistic. Actually, in, in armored combat, you know, in like like kind of competitive armored combat leagues, that actually happens a lot. You know, the groups of guys who train together, they'll just, you know, isolate people, dogpile them, smush them into the ground, and then pick someone new. So I, there's a, some confusion here, because there's a lot of people surrounding one guy and just, you know, beating the crap out of him. But it seems like with the footman, when he when he gets his shield up and manages to block, no problemo, but if he gets hit, he's probably not going to survive. That's what it seems like. 
He lost, looks like he lost his helmet in one of those hits, and then it went down immediately. So maybe that's a mechanic of the game that you do slowly lose armor pieces, and then you're easier to get. Pretty good amount of guys using pull arms in this situation, which honestly would be the best thing to use, I think, with that many people around. It seems like if you're the guy with the sword and the shield, using that long kind of straight thrust seems to be the way to kind of make up for that reach differential. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, that's going to be the best way to defend yourself. <laughs> you're using a single-hand sword with the shield, so you're faster and able to use both. Stop those long reaches in the hopes that maybe you can get in closer, right? Obviously, that shield, also noticing that shield right now is super damaged, which is another cool detail. I know, yeah, I'm sure uh, at some point it just it just stops working, yeah? Yeah, probably it just completely just falls off his arm. I know uh, for Honor, which we did previously, that never was a mechanic. Like, they didn't get into that. Details was more just bombastic battles, um, and this, this game has... Um, a nice difference in that. I did not expect him to survive that, so that was good. <laughs> oh, there it goes, the shield's gone, and he went down, much like it would be <laughs> in the real world. Oh no! Oh, no! He let himself on fire! <laughs> Mistakes were made, unless it was a kind of a uh, look at me, you should fear me, kind of like Blackbeard used to light his beard on fire, right, with little... Uh, the TNT lines. Um. The main character is using, looks like a messer to me. Like it's a pretty mm -hmm. big single edge knife and he's slashing with it. A messer, messer means knife in German. For all of you out there who aren't total nerds like us, I don't know why he'd choose that as a primary weapon. It seems like you have to get real close, but he's doing some damage. Yeah, if you're slashed through the through one of your bones in your arm, you ain't. You're done. You're not getting back up and fight. I'll back to uh, home base if you can, <laughs> or hide in the bush until it's over. I remember seeing in this one in particular, there's just lots of ganging up on people. Like there's, you know, whether it's blue team or red team, you know, folks gang up, kill one guy, and they kind of break off and sort of, you know, it's like amoebas joining and then breaking off. But if you get alone, dead. Group of people. You know, you get your people, find a guy alone, boom. It seems like there's a lot of ganging up in this one. And my, I don't know if it's just the way the players are playing or if it's the geography that makes that easier, but I just see a lot of like, there's almost no one-on-one. -on -one. It's like a group of guys smushing one guy or reverse from the other team. That's what it seems like. Yeah, I mean, it's all good examples of like, when you're sparring or in a duel, the techniques are there, you're, you're very aware, but in a massive battle like this, like, you know, your techniques are there as a foundation to survive, but other than that, it's just a brawl, right? Especially you're not trying to hit your friends. Where is everybody? You're constantly head on a swivel. I'm just gonna hit as much as I can, however is possible, so that I don't go down. Yeah, it seems like the, the basics have to be relied more upon in terms of fighting technique and with like a lot more bandwidth in your brain and body devoted to movement. Like, it's not just what am I doing and where's my primary opponent, it's like, where am I? Am I like surrounded? Is there a wall behind me? Like all that stuff seems to be a, like a lot more important to consider than like doing some super duper wazoo, you know, creative, you know, advanced master stroke technique. It's like, eh, just get, get near a wall so you can't get smashed from behind and then like pick your moment. Well, and, like, I remember when I first started learning, your every gut instinct is to hold on to your sword as long as possible. But then, you know, you, you learn and you get smarter and your teachers are like, let go of it and just go in with your hands because people are so focused on the weapon. That might be to get you to take advantage of that. Let go of your sword. You can get it in a minute. Use your hands to take the guy out or at least get him off of you. And then go, you can grab, grab it if you have a second. And then, so that kind of thing is going to come into play in big battles too. Seems like a very ceremonial place to get taken out under that tree. I like all the things that are catching on fire. That's cool. Actually, you know, the, the, the kind of thick clothes and armor, even if you had like, you know, burning oil all over you, wouldn't necessarily burn your skin. It might burn some of your skin, but that there's a lot, you're wearing a lot of clothes when you're wearing armor, man. It's like layer after layer. It's really hot. Like you could suffocate, you could get heat stroke, but like wouldn't be a bad thing to be covered in if you're, you know, if you get hit with boiling oil. I'm yep. sorry, burning, <laughs> burning oil or whatever that is. I'll take the boiling oil, sir. I mean, you won't, you won't look cool anymore because everything burned which is a bummer. Well, you'll look cool while you're on fire, <laughs> right. if you're still fighting. Yeah. And then afterwards, less, less right. so. You gotta, you gotta really make the most of that moment when you're on fire fighting. All these arenas that we've been seeing 
in these battles make me want to play the game because I wasn't sure at first, you know, watching it. I was like, well, you know, the action's okay. It looks cool, and but every time we come to a new setting, this game has shown really cool areas that you're kind of wanting. Oh, this is a fortress that we want to take for sure because it would be really awesome to do so. The thing that I'm not really seeing, a move in which you're just sort of pushing someone or knocking them backwards because I feel like the knocking someone off of a second or third story battlement might be a great way to kill them. And uh, I don't know if that's something you can do in this game. And that, that's, that's, I think that'd be a bit of a weakness. Who said, no more to the lords of Agatha, no more conscription. It was a good speech, except the guy to his left was like, I can't do this, and he just fainted. Neighbors, I ask you once again to rise up and proclaim, no more! No more. Love a good battle charge. Uh, <laughs> uh oh. Oh, I like that. I like it. It's all in lines. That's cool. Oh, I, I wish they could form shield walls. That would be sweet. Yeah. The chaos, and again, as, as the commander, if you can't quite see what's happening, it's very difficult to issue different orders or know what's happening so how you can react or if you're going to put your reserves in. So it's not very likely to do a night battle because they're just really huge gambles. Like, they're, they're gambles, I'd say, maybe in the same way as, like, naval battles or gambles. There's just a lot of factors you can't control that could make you lose when you didn't necessarily have to. Um, and like, again, just on an individual level, yeah, it's it's already really hard to see out of a helmet. It's even harder to see out of a helmet when there's no light, you know, and in, in a world lit only by fire, if at all, or like the moonlight. Oh no, <laughs> burn the village. I like this. This is some, this is some metal stuff is what this is. In Middle Ages perspective, the pole axe is basically the culmination of, of the training for every other single weapon. Everything else you have to use for different weapons comes into play with this pole. It's awesome. It's like, again, the, the lance is the primary weapon if you're on a horse, the poleaxe is the primary weapon if you're on your feet. It's awesome. Yeah, it's not something that movies or games tend to go towards either because they're not, you know, I don't want sexy like a sword, but man, they are useful. I think they're plenty sexy, but they're super dangerous. Almost basically no one's trained to use them properly, slash safely, and no one's really qualified to choreograph them. Oh, oh, the peasant. <laughs> peasant with pitchfork. Yeah. Never had a chance. Yeah. Don't feel good about yourself there? They should have thought about this before they became peasants. <laughs> <laughs> what he's carrying now versus the pole axe, like you're even playing different, right? You're, he's more in the fray because he can get closer because he has to compared to the pole axe, you know, he's poking peasants from the front. So I suspect like with something like the shield, your block is stronger and covers a bigger angle than like a half to weapon. I feel like the half to weapons block is probably pretty bad. That might come into play as well. It's like, oh, I can yeah. get closer because I can just block the dang thing as opposed to like, uh oh, here we go. Oh, you got good, the good. Everything's fine. Yeah, everything's fine. <laughs> hey, hey, he's got, oh, he got impaled, oh, that's so cool. His back. Yeah, that looked good. Correct. And what he deserves for Correct. Swing, swinging the spear like he was. <laughs> he's paying for all those peasants he murdered. <laughs> Again, really good sound design. When you lose your shield, it's a good splintering noise to make you realize. Oh, oh no! Yeah, that was good. <laughs> hey, uh, also everyone, don't forget to burn the village. <laughs> Quit screwing around and burn the village. Burn the village, like there's a demon in your mind just keeps telling you. Oh good, yes, yes. Lighting the fires. Oh no, you're grabbing the torches. Ah, and then you're throwing it on the, oh man, throwing it oh. on, the, on the houses. I'm curious if I he's see. gonna use the torch as a weapon. Yeah, how do you feel? I mean, I'm, I'm torn because the the sound design is cool and the atmosphere of just the battle is interesting, but I do enjoy decent incidental orchestral music, so I'm, I'm kind of torn. Um, what do you think? you like more or less music? I think I like a little more, but I like when it's not. I like when there's just the sounds. Yeah, because uh, when it comes in and on moments, right, that makes right, you John. feel like it's purposeful. And they, you, you know, if you're getting close to the objective, if they ramp up the score then, you know, or or especially when they did the battle charge in the other the other battle, like those are the moments you really want the bigs, you know. It makes you feel really super cool. And that's pretty much all I listen to music wise is soundtracks. So I'm good with it. More music. Yeah. Me too, mostly soundtracks. Yeah. Thanks everybody for watching Experts React. Don't forget to follow Gameology on Facebook and YouTube. Drew Curtis, Drew the Curtis on Instagram. And we got Mr. Paul. Follow me at actor Paul Suda on Instagram. Mind your manners on the battlefield. Thanks, gang. We'll see you next time.